Bison. Are you men enough to fight with me? Anyone who opposes me will be destroyed. <laughs> In 1994 saw the release of Street Fighter. With an estimated budget of around $30 million, it managed to make a huge profit raking nearly $100 million worldwide, despite getting negative feedback from the critics and the fans of the video game. Street Fighter was directed and written by Stephen E. D'Souza, who was well known for writing the scripts to Die Hard, Commando and The Running Man. The producer Michael Pressman, who had produced some great films such as Conan and The Crow, asked D'Souza to write the script. D'Souza would only do it if he could direct the film as well. The producer asked him if he knew about Street Fighter and D'Souza said of course he spent most of his weekends hanging out with his son at the arcades playing the game. He had never directed a feature film before as far as I'm aware and Michael Pressman said if you can come up with a story overnight because he had a meeting with one of the producers at Capcom the following day then he can have the job. He came up with a plot that incorporated all of the characters from the game and Capcom were very happy with the results after the meeting. It's shocking really, the story didn't have many rewrites or was given time to produce something faithful to the game, it's just clearly done to capitalise on the franchise and in a quick space of time. With the huge mistakes made with Super Mario Bros the movie, you would think the industry would think more carefully about approaching a video game adaptation and would spend the time to create a story that would work. In 1994, Street Fighter the game was at its height of its popularity. In 1991 saw the release of Street Fighter 2 which stormed the arcades. With its revolutionary style of fighting and the introduction of special moves and combos and got everyone addicted to it, especially me, I became obsessed with the game. Instead of the game getting a sequel, it received updates which refined the gameplay and gave the players the chance to use the boss characters in single or versus mode. When the movie was going into production, Capcom wanted the producers of the film to incorporate the new characters that were going to be introduced in the latest update called Super Street Fighter 2. These characters were Kami, Phalong, T-Hawk and DJ. The plot to the film is very standard. It very much plays out like a weak plot to a James Bond film. M. Bison has kidnapped several dozen humanitarians and demands $20 billion for their release or he will kill them. Guile, the leader of the AN forces, has managed to enter the fictional Southeast Asian nation of Shadaloo, joined by Kami and T-Hawk. Guile's friend, Carlos Blanca, has been kidnapped by Bison's troops and Bison plans to turn him into a mutated soldier. During the course of the movie, you encounter Ryu and Ken, who are con artists, who attempt to sell fake weapons to Shadaloo Tong crime syndicate leader, Sagat. When Sagat discovers the weapons are fake, he plans for them to be killed by his champion, Vega. Just before the fight commences, Guile smashes into the arena and arrests everyone. Colonel Guile sees the qualities in Ryu and Ken and enlists them to befriend Sagat. So the Aeon forces can track down the whereabouts of M. Bison. During their journey, they encounter the other characters from the game. If you have played the game, then you generally know the backgrounds of each character in the film. It alters the motives of the original characters. You have Chun-Li, Balrog and E. Honda working for a news corporation who all have their issues with M. Bison. By the end of the movie, the characters become their computer game counterparts, kind of like a superhero's alter ego becoming the hero they're supposed to be. The only character from the video game who isn't in the movie is Fei Long, who was basically a Bruce Lee ripoff, which is understandable for him to be left out. They introduce Captain Sawada, the actor auditioned for another role, I'm guessing probably Ryu, but didn't get it, but the producers were very impressed with him and cast him in an original role. The fighting in the film is very average to say the least. The actors who are trained in martial arts do perform well and their technique on screen is fluid and to a good standard, but for the actors who are cast due to their likeness to the computer game counterpart, unfortunately can't fight. The choreographer, Benny the Jet, had so many actors to train to an acceptable level. It must have been a nightmare. All the fights just seem so staged. It doesn't look realistic and spectacular, it just seems so rushed. What pissed me off at the time 
it had hardly any of the special moves that the characters do in the game. I think many kids at the time were waiting patiently to see them perform them. But what you get is just a small nod to each of the moves. You've got Van Damme doing the flash kick, Ryu doing a hurricane kick and a fireball which just seems like a quick flash of light, E Honda doing the 100 hand slap, Vega doing his claw roll, Ken doing an embarrassing dragon punch that looked like it wouldn't hurt a fly, Kami doing a thrust kick which doesn't resemble what she does in the game, and a sort of throw manoeuvre, and then Bison doing his psycho crusher move. That is it as far as I can recall. There may be one or two other moves that the actors do but these are the ones that I recognise. At the time there was no internet so you weren't really aware what was coming out unless you avidly read film magazines, which I didn't at the time. I only found out about Street Fighter in a magazine called Mean Machine Sega. There was a two page spread previewing the film. I was well excited when I found out there was going to be a movie, but also a little concerned with the choice of actors who were portraying the characters. The casting is one of the huge faults with the movie. The director went out with a mission to find actors who resemble the video game characters and worry about if they could fight later on which isn't a huge problem because many actors are trained in martial arts during a production of a film just like The Matrix. Raoul Julia unfortunately passed away before the film was released, does a fantastic job and is so over the top with his lines it becomes very theatrical. He took the role because his kids were huge fans of the game. Van Damme was written in mind from the get-go, probably down to his popularity. He has done far better performances, this just comes across as very wooden and very cheesy, but it's still kind of fun to watch him goofball his way through it. One of my favourites is the guy who plays Zangief, who looks identical to his video game counterpart and provides some of the best humour in the film. The worst casting goes with the guy playing Ken, who shares no resemblance to the video game character in looks and how he acts. T-Hawk, what the fuck happened there? DJ is a computer programmer in the film, and in the game he is a Jamaican kickboxer and breakdancer. By far the most embarrassing interpretation of one of the characters is Blanca. It looks like they hired a guy who wasn't big enough in terms of muscle mass, and sprayed him green and slapped a orange wig on him. It's a total joke and laughably bad, and don't get me started on Dalsim. These choices really pissed me off as a fan at the time. Looking back, Stephen E. D'Souza was clearly desperate to fit all the characters into the film, and the characterizations were all ruined. Kids aren't stupid, they all know if someone changes a character and their background story. It's crazy how the director could think he could get away with it. They should have really had the story focus on the original 12 characters from the original Street Fighter 2 and if say if it was successful to warrant a sequel then introduce the new characters instead of just cramming everyone into the film just to please the fans or Capcom and their marketing strategy. On a technical and design level, the movie does unfortunately look very cheap. The colour palette of Street Fighter does have that pastel look to it giving it that pop feel but the director makes little use of the scope format. Everything looks very centred when it's shot, like it's made for TV. The director did say when they created the pan and scan version, it felt more like the video game. It does feel more like it was shot by someone who makes TV programs and doesn't have the visual eye for cinematic framing and compositions. That's just my opinion. The musical score to the film is generally very good, it has a sort of heroic military march. It unfortunately as far as I'm aware doesn't incorporate any of the music from the video game or even tries to homage the music which is a huge shame because the soundtrack to the game is easily up there as one of the best soundtracks ever, for a video game that is. The composer Graeme Raval creates an original score that complements the film very well and stands on its own. Also the movie does incorporate many rap style tunes from Ice Cube and MC Hammer, which I remember his popularity had dropped sharply by 1994. There was a music video produced featuring the cast mainly Van Damme dancing with MC Hammer, which is hilarious. It was on TV a lot during the time of its release mainly on MTV or a channel called The Box, I think. It's not MTV, it's Box! Cheers Kev. I don't think the song did very well in the charts, because in the UK, audiences' tastes in music had moved on, but it's still kinda catchy and it's not awful. To coincide with the film's release, Capcom hired a company called Incredible Technologies to produce a new arcade game based on the film. 
that incorporated digitised characters very much like Mortal Kombat. The game does get a lot of hate from mainstream media, especially from websites like GameSpot and Game Trailers. I played this when it came out, I think it was Alton Towers Amusement Park. I was actually pretty impressed with the graphics in the game itself. The animation was far more fluid than say Mortal Kombat 3 which seemed more stiff with its animation style. The game played pretty well and was easy to pick up and master. There was a version converted to the PlayStation and Sega Saturn. Capcom changed the style of gameplay and many graphical sprites and it plays very sluggish and slow in comparison. I was pretty disappointed with it and I would have preferred at the time if they did a full conversion of the arcade. You can only play the arcade version via emulation, but it's never been officially released on any home console. To sum this film up, everyone who has seen it knows it's bad. It has subpar acting, weak script with hilarious dialogue, poorly staged fight scenes and very poor casting. But for some reason for these bad points to it, and there are many, it's still very entertaining to watch. Probably because it's such a train wreck of a movie and it definitely falls into that category of it's so bad, it's good. If you watch the film Stone Cold Sober, you're going to hate it and the film snob inside you will attack it, but that's fair enough. But if you watch it with a bunch of mates when you are pissed or stoned, then it becomes hilarious and thoroughly entertaining. The producers made a huge mistake hiring D'Souza and giving him a short space of time to write the script and letting him direct the feature. They should have spent more time coming up with a faithful adaptation and given the job of director to a younger guy who knew his audience and what they wanted. Very much like Paul Anderson getting the job as director on Mortal Kombat, which turned out very well. If you are a fan of Street Fighter then you're already aware of the animated movie that was produced around the same time, which is very faithful to the video game and provides a great story and concentrates on Ryu and Ken, who are the main stars of the Street Fighter series, which the film should have revolved around in the first place and not just include them as supporting characters. Supposedly the movie still makes money for Capcom, so people are still buying it on DVD and Blu-ray, probably for the main reasons I've highlighted, because it's fucking hilarious. There was a new Street Fighter produced a couple of years ago called The Legend of Chun-Li, which was a sort of prequel, and it was so bad it made this Street Fighter movie look like Gone with the Wind. It's that bad. It doesn't even fall into that category of it's so bad it's good, it's just a total disaster. Street Fighter the movie is by no means the worst video game movie. It's close, but I think that award should go to Mortal Kombat Annihilation, Double Dragon, or any video game adaptation by Yuva Bowl. The film is campy and fun, and if someone says this is the worst movie ever made, then they clearly haven't seen many movies. And also, it's got Kylie Minogue in it. Everyone loves Kylie. You have three days. If my 20 billion dollars are not delivered by then, the hostages will die and the world will hold you responsible. You hostages, if you can hear me, we're coming, we're coming. Now, who wants to go home? And who wants to go with me? <laughs>